Good morning, everybody. The solemnity of the Assumption, which is today, is celebrated today in most places all over the world, except in a few countries, but not all of the U.S., for example, not all of Canada. But uh, uh, in, in these other places, they celebrated it on the exact uh, uh, 40th day after the Resurrection, which is last Thursday. But for us, it's Ascension Sunday. I have to tell you uh, at the start that Ascension, the Ascension of the Lord might not be that easy to understand and uh, we may not be fully aware of the full import or the meaning of the Ascension of the Lord. And it doesn't help any that right now, for example, the place where the Lord traditionally is known to have ascended into heaven is actually held by Muslims in, in the Holy Land. And on, as of last night, uh, if I may add to the string of bad news, the Temple Mount, which was the original site of the Temple of Solomon, which is now the Dome of the Rock of the Muslims, was burning. And we do not know who started the conflagration, but it is not good news at all. The Temple Mount where the Dome of the Rock is, the original Temple of Solomon. And outside, if you have been to, to Jerusalem, you would know that there is the Wailing Wall at the outside confines of the Dome of the Rock where the Jews are gathering in order to wail to pray the Psalms of disorientation. There was one Sunday I was talking about the Psalms of orientation, but there are also Psalms of disorientation, and then Psalms of a new orientation. The prayers that we have in scripture, particularly the book of Psalms, are a very good representative of what we are undergoing sometimes we declare the glory and praise of god but there are times when we need to cry our hearts out by the rivers of babylon there we sat and wept by the poplars that grew there we hung up our harps there is a time for everything under the heavens there is a time to be born a time to die a time to cry a time to celebrate a time to complain, but also a time to wake up and do. And today, Ascension Sunday, you've got it all. Why? Because you have two conflicting, seemingly conflicting realities. You have the presence and the absence of Christ all rolled into one. The presence of Christ in mystery, but the absence of Christ in terms of physicality. Today, I have to declare the full meaning of this and it is summarized in two very short, pithy sentences. The first, Jesus lives with God, the Father. But the second is, Jesus lives for us. Even if physically He is no longer by us, with us, he lives for us and reigns for us. Now, you might say, how does this square with all the th realities that are happening around us? Let me enumerate some. Uh, since Teng Xiaoping started the reform of the big empire called China, ruled by the Communist Party of China, the he had a very focused vision, and that vision was to do things slowly, but the end goal is very much clear to them. And that is to rule the whole world economically. And since they joined the World Trade Organization in 2000, because of greed of Western Europe, Italy, France, Germany, England, and of course, the USA, North America, 
they transferred all the manufacturing to China. So everything now is made in China. So God made everything in six days. Yes, He created everything on earth, but everything is made in China, even your PPEs and your uh, face masks and face shields, even if we have our own products here. Baka masaktad ang namin ng China. Kaya lahat galing doon. Why am I saying this? Because the trends are very clear. I'm a futurist. You will have to excuse me because I, I read trends. I'm a futurist. And since the economic rules is now ruled by just one rogue country, then do you think they will protect the West Philippine Sea? No, America is indebted by the trillions to China. And they have already produced F-16s and F-65s because some corrupt Americans sold or Israelis sold planes and the plans of the planes to them. Why am I saying this? Because right now what is going on in the Holy Land has been going on for thousands of years. The tribal groups of what is known as the Middle East right now, they are still at it and killing one another. And yet we talk about ascension. And this is precisely the good news. I need to talk about the good news, but I need to frame it in bad news so you understand that I am not a hopeless person. I'm preaching hope. And you need to join me in hoping because if you don't, then there is no reason for you to be here this morning. The reason why you come here and you risk your health in order to join this prayer, yung panaghoy ng kanyang bayan, yung kahilingan ng kanyang bayang minamahal, ay sapagat umaasa tayo, God is not an absent presence. The ascension of the Lord might remind us of the absence of Christ in the physical world, but He is present in a mystical way. He lives with God, but He lives for us. And this is the whole point about the ascension. You see, the report of the Gospel of Mark tells us, apart from the fact that uh, uh, the last, um, the last chapter of the Gospel of Mark tells us factually, and I repeat, so then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. This is the historical fact. Because gospel is history, the Bible is historical. It may not be scientifically historical as we understand it now, but what is written is written. And if you read it with faith, then the history that you read tells us that there is a meaning to history. And that meaning is what we want to install. That meaning is what we want to bring home. That meaning is what we want to enrich and make real in our lives. And how do we make it real? This is now part, second part of the good news. Jesus said to his disciples, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. God is absent in many places in the world because it has been replaced by greed. China has no God. They have no moral qualms. What is moral is what makes money. And therefore they can steal islands without batting an eyelash. And their history tells them that they have the right to claim everything. Everything south of them belongs to them. And we are southeast of them. My dear brothers and sisters, what is now the hope that I'm talking about? The hope that I'm talking about is not wishful thinking. The hope that I'm talking about According to Peter, uh, in one of his letters, be prepared to explain the hope that is in you. 
which means to say that if you just are wishfully thinking about better times, but you do nothing to curb the corruption in your neighborhood, you do nothing to control and to help in the whole Philippines becoming a trash land. Malaking basurahan. We are number three in the world in producing plastic trash. China is number one, always number one. Number two is Indonesia. And the Philippines is number three, followed by Vietnam. We create a lot of plastic trash. But no one feels guilty about it. And uh, I know I'm also part of this problem because whenever we order things online, I am aghast at the amount of plastic trash that we create. Yung in-order ninyo nakabalot sa plastic, ang binalot ay plastic pa rin. Yung plastic ay binalot ang kahon. Yung kahon ay may isa pang kahon. At sa loob ng kahon ay may isa pang plastic. Anong ginagawa niyo? Binubungkos ninyo at tinatapon. That's all we do. And we create so much trash. And many of the things we order made in China are all what they call in Italian merce discarto. Trash. They're, not, they're good only for once. You put on the switch, it works for 15 minutes. And the next time, it just comes out of service. So, what hope am I talking about? Not wishful thinking. You've got to do something. You've got to go into the whole world. And the whole world, as far as you are concerned right now, is your family, your grandchildren who are not coming to church. The whole world, as far as you are concerned, is your neighbor, is your katulong, is your kasambahay. The whole world that you need to evangelize are the people you buy stuff from in the market in Russia or there sa dulo ng Doña Soledad or sa Las Piñas or sa Paranaque sa Kabiasnan This is the hope that I am proclaiming today The hope that I am proclaiming today is not just sitting nice and pretty in your prayer room and praying kilometrical rosaries but you do nothing about it Prayer is good. I pray on average five or six rosaries a day since the two lockdowns began. And uh, there are, and there is always every day an increasing number of people who ask for my prayers. I cannot answer their private messages because I'm just answering them has become a chore for me. And therefore some I just like and put the heart in upusuan and that's all I can do. But I will have to ask you, what are you doing? I say this because, and I talked about this last week, many religious don't teach anymore. They have decided to do administrative work. So many priests are not teaching in classrooms anymore. I am not, ako nagbubuhat ng sariling bangko, but the only time I stopped teaching in a classroom was when I was doing studies. And yet I was still preaching on weekends and forming groups in Northern Virginia and in Baltimore and wherever I went in Guam and elsewhere. So you have here the reality. Jesus died. That's a historical fact. Jesus rose from the dead. Another historical fact. Jesus ascended into heaven. He lives with the Father and the Spirit, but He lives for us in the Spirit. And therefore, the Spirit is now the one that we hold on to and call to our side. He is paraclete. We will celebrate that next Sunday. He is paraclete, and parakletos in Greek means the one you call to your side to stand by you, to defend you, to comfort you and to tell you and lead you into all the truth. The truth may be hard to accept. I, as a futurist, I, I don't even want to venture into my predictions, but the handwritings are on the wall. 
all of Southeast Asia is under the hegemony of that rogue nation, most of the countries of Africa, most of the countries of South America. Even Australia is buying a whole lot of stuff from them. Iron ore, steel, all the iron ore are, are, are taken from Australia, in the Philippines, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, everywhere. And then we buy them back in terms of steel. So all the buildings going up right now are made with steel from China. And that's how rich they are. So nababayaran ng mga gobernador, kaya napapatag ang mga bundok. Nababayaran ng mga barangay, nababayaran ng mga mayor. It's all about money. And therefore, we do need to wake up. We do need to strengthen our hope. But be prepared to do, not only to talk about the hope that is in you. Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. And the promise is this, and I will end with this. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And whoever does not believe will be condemned. At the end of the day, it's not America, it's not Russia, it's not China. Who will save us? It's God. And we are all called to be with God. And Jesus right now, who is with God, lives for us and gives us the power to claim what He has given to everyone. The universal call to love, the universal call to salvation. At the end of the day, there won't be Israel, there won't be the Jews and the Muslims and the Christians. There will be only one family under God. America has, has lost its identity. One nation under what? Under Biden? Under Trump? No. When the Founding Fathers started America, it's one nation under God. And even the dollar in God we trust. It doesn't make sense anymore because they've thrown God out of the picture. So in gold we trust, yes, not in God. Today, let us bring back our faith and hope and love. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved.